Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I'm going to cover three features of RepoDB. In my last video, I covered how to insert and select data using RepoDB. In today's video, I'm going to first quickly cover how to do update and delete. And then I'm going to cover a couple of interesting features. First one is caching and second one is tracing. So to do that, first let's start with update. Now, just like insert, update can also be done three ways. First way is using inline query which is exactly same as insert it just instead of an insert statement you will do an update statement so I'm not going to cover that in the video the second one is using procedure which is also very similar to how you would do a uh, insert and the third one is using the update method and that's what I'm going to cover here so I'm going to create a new class and I'm going to name it as warehouse update And inside of this updater, I'll have a single method. It's going to public void update, and it is going to take the warehouse object. And I'm going to have a constructor, which will take connection string. And then in this method, I'm going to create a SQL connection. And here I'm going to use an extension method again from RepoDB and this is going to be the update. And the update extension method, as you can see, just like insert, if you remember from my last video, it is taking table name and entity or you can directly pass the T entity, which I'm going to do. So I'm just going to pass the warehouse object and call it today. That's all you need to do to update a database. So I'm going to extract an interface and then next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to the dependency injection container here. And I'm just going to copy paste because it's going to be very similar. That's it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the controller. And here I'm just going to add the interface so that it can be injected by the container and then here in the post method instead of adding I'm just going to repurpose this method for updating so now if I do a post instead of adding it is just going to update so let me quickly run this application and then using postman I'm going to make a request to update one of the rows from the table and if you remember from last video this is my database and these are the four rows so I'm going to update one of these rows so I'll go back here and let's use the same post method and let's update warehouse one and instead of this changed name one and one two three changed address and let's quickly execute this we get a 200 back now if we go to database do you execute we can see that the name and address is changed it's pretty straightforward there's no complexity here let's go back to the code again now this time let's create a warehouse deleter create a constructor which will take a connection string and then and we're going to delete a warehouse with ID so we can see using So after the connection is created, we can call connection dot delete and we can pass as warehouse. And then once we pass the warehouse, we just have to pass the primary key, which is ID. And that should be it. Now this will delete the warehouse. Now let's go to the startup and register this class. So I'm just going to copy paste the same thing and just replace it because all of them kind of follow the same pattern. So after that, I'm going to go into the controller, add this interface. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new method. So I'm going to have public I action result delete ID. And here the HTTP verb will be HTTP delete. ID and then I can do warehouse deleted dot delete pass on the ID and then return okay so now let's run the application and then I'll go to postman and I'm going to execute a delete statement and I'm going to delete the warehouse number four HTTP verb is delete I'm going to execute the query and I get a 200 back now if I go back to the database and refresh I'll see warehouse 4 is gone. So you can see how easy and simple it was to just delete a warehouse. Now we can use inline query and store procedure for that but it's going to look very similar to how the insert inline query or the insert store procedure looks like. It's going to be exactly the same. So I'm not going to cover that. It's pretty straightforward. Now let's get into some interesting feature. The feature of caching. Now there are two ways to implement caching. One way is to implement in a class if we are implementing base repository which is extremely straightforward and the second one is if we are using IDB connection where we need to manage the cache. If we are using base repository then the cache is managed by RepoDB. So first I'll start with the base repository example and then I'm going to use the iCache example. So let's consider this warehouse repository. It's already created. It is derived from the base repository. Now in the controller when we do a get what we can do is instead of using the warehouse provider we can use warehouse repository and then we can do here we can do query all and then to the query all we can pass a cache key and the cache key I'm going to just say all for the time being. What this will do is this will first time go and fetch the data and then cache it and next time onwards it is going to provide it from the cache. Now here the framework handles the cache, the expiration and everything as well as what is the duration. We don't have any control over it but the advantage is it's pretty straightforward. There's nothing that we have to do in terms of coding. So now let's run this. So if I run this application now and I go and do a get. If I do a get I'm going to get three because I deleted one. Now let's go in the database and change the name and address of the first row. So here if I say update the warehouse and set name is equal to warehouse one address equal to one two three state trade where id is equal to 1. So now if I do a select here again I can see warehouse 1 but if I do a get here it is still changed name 1 because the system does not know that the cache was updated because of course it is triggered based on a time interval. Now the same thing can be done even with the IDB connection. So let's explore that. Now if we have to do it with IDB connection which is for example we had a warehouse provider here. In that case we need to create and manage our own cache. So let's create a in-memory cache so we can say memory cache and this cache has to implement i cache interface of repodb now if we do that it comes with bunch of method i'm not going to implement all of them i'm going to just implement a couple of them which are the most critical one now for keeping the cache i'm going to declare uh, i dictionary and i'm going to name it as data now here what i'm going to do is while adding if data is equal to null then I'm going to say data is equal to new of dictionary and Q will be string and the value is going to be cache item of T. So this is what I'm going to do and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say temp data is equal to I'm going to cast data to temp data otherwise the methods which are provided by a generic i dictionary will not be available 
now I'll do that if temp data dot contains key the key and throw exception throw exception is a parameter by default it is true which means if the key exists and we are trying to add it again it will throw an exception and this is something when you call add should be overriding so now if that is the case then just throw new argument exception lazy error message and then after that if it doesn't contain then we are just going to do a data dot add and for the key we'll go with key and for the value we're just going to pass new of cache item of t for the key it's the key for value it's the value passed and then we can pass the expiration as well which is coming so now add is done and then I'm not going to worry about rest of the items I'm just going to implement the get and get also I'll have similar implementation a little bit different so let's try to do that just copy paste this line and then in the get I'm going to just say if data is equal to null then just return null and in this case if key is not there and throw exception then throw new argument exception and again lazy error message and then finally what I'm going to do is I'm going to return and I'll have to do some conversion here so I'll have to have data of the key and then I'm going to cast it to cache item of t and that's about it so now I'm all set what I'm going to do is in here I'm going to add this one as singleton it's going to be i cache and memory cache it doesn't have any constructor nothing doesn't have any dependency so it is pretty straightforward to set it up so now it is set up so next thing I'm going to do is in my warehouse provider I'm going to add the dependency to iCache and then here when I do a get I'm going to say cache key is custom all and then cache is the cache okay so these two are done now I have to go here and update because this one was just taking connection string so now I can add instead of using this I can use and then I can do get services and I cache so it's going to get it from dependency ignition container and pass it along so now I'm all set now I'm going to for this one I'm going to put breakpoint into the memory cache so that we can walk through what exactly happens so I'm going to put a breakpoint on add and get what we will see is first it will try to get it will not get anything so it will get the data from database and then it's going to add into the cache but next time when I call it is just going to get from the cache every time as expected so I'm going to run it and then I'm going to make a get call oh I have to change the controller the controller have to go back here using the warehouse provider dot get so now let me run this application and if I run the application now let's go to get try it again gets in first time data is now it's just going to return and then now it got everything from database now it is trying to add it to the cache so it will add it to the cache and go now if I execute next time now it's coming to cache this is not null the key exists so it is just going to return from cache and we're going to see the data is coming from cache and it's going to happen again and again until unless the cache is expired and here because we we manage the cache we can essentially subscribe to events when other APIs are getting called and based on that we can expire the cache so if something is added we can just expire the cache or we can just 
add it to the item list if something is deleted we can just delete from the item list so we can keep this cache as well as database handy but the problem with in-memory cache of course is that you know if we have distributed servers the call is going to come to only one of them so cache will not be up to date in both of them so in that case you know using something like redis would make a lot more sense but this is one interesting feature the next one i wanted to cover today is tracing so tracing is basically seeing how the different components when we call not the inline queries even for inline queries it might be useful to understand how much time it takes and things like that but especially for this kind of statement how much time it takes and what exact query it is firing so first let's create a new class and let's name it as custom trace and this will implement itrace and then I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of all this exception statement otherwise we'll start getting unnecessary errors okay now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show the update because my controller is already hooked up for update and for update we were doing their out of box query so let's let's do that so in custom trades search for update okay so for update what we can do here is we can do console and this will fire after update so console dot write line and then we can say okay first thing is log dot execution time comma log dot parameter and third one is log dot actual statement now the parameter is going to be in this case is going to be an object because we are passing this object now if we implement a two string here so if we have two string overridden and here instead of the base implementation if we just do a json convert dot serialize and if we just serialize it as json then we can see exactly what it is printing so let's do that now we are all set and then this is our trace now we can inject a dependency of this trace so first let's go to the startup and let's do a services dot add I trace custom trace and now for the warehouse updater we can go and have I trace as a dependency and here we can pass for trace we can say it is the trace object so now we are all set we have to go to startup again and here let's get the trace from dependency injection container so let's do c dot get service and i trace this should do so let's run the application now and now let's go back oh, i have an error i missed a semicolon here okay so now let's run this and now let's go back to the postman and in this update statement again let's do the same update it's fine and we got a 200 back now if we go here we can see what is the time taken it's giving exact time it's taken and you can see it's extremely fast and then id what exact parameter so id name and address and then what was the query just update warehouse set name equal to name address equal to address where id is equal to id it is exactly what we expected and also of course if we rerun the query the database is changed so this is the trace feature that i wanted to show and of course you can for every single method provided by the framework the ReportDB framework we can have traces and we can log everything and we also we can do some after operations if we want as a part of this which i would not suggest but it's a hack might be useful at some cases so that's all i wanted to cover today if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and if you are not subscribed to my channel and you have been getting value out of my channel please subscribe to it thanks so much for watching this video